How do you load a map file? Load, and then the file name, quads.mat. Make sure you include the file extension. That's an important part of your setup here. Okay, load quads.mat. You hit enter. Whatever happens to be in that mat file, it's going to include variable names and values. That's going to now show up in your workspace. In this case, this mat file just contains a variable called quads. It's a 42 by 3 array. So we can take a look at quads. Just type quads in your command window, hit enter. It'll show you everything that's in there. It's all these numbers. Okay, so that's loading a map file. That's it. That's all it takes to load a map file, that one command. So try not to overcomplicate things. When you have a map file, load the map file. That's it. That's all there is. Okay, so let's move on to the text file here. So when you have a text file, the first thing you're going to want to do with any text file is you want to open it up and see what's inside. So you can do that in MATLAB. You can also do that in Word. You can do it in Notepad. Uh, if you have a good programmer's text editor, you can use that. Um, if you really, if you are, if you are really going to get more into programming after this class, I strongly recommend getting a good programmer's text editor um, and install it on your computer. There are really good ones that are free. So if you are interested in doing that, let me know, um, you know, office hours or send me an email and I'll, I can give you some recommendations on text editors. So uh, anyway, you can open any text file in, you know, Word, Excel, uh, Notepad. I don't recommend Word or Excel for this. I recommend using Notepad, or you can even open it right here in MATLAB. So to open it in MATLAB, we're going to look at quadratic.txt. Just go over here, double-click it, and it'll open in MATLAB. That's probably the easiest way uh, if you're working in MATLAB. Now we can see what's inside that file now. So if you don't need to read through all the numbers. The whole reason for having a, a data set in a file is to just transport the data and use it in other things. But actually reading the data, this is you know, 42 times 3. That is uh, 126 numbers in here. That's a lot of numbers to look at ourselves. I mean, we could look at them. You can scroll through. You can kind of get a fair idea of what the numbers look like, um, you know, what kind of values we're seeing here. At the top, we can see that we have that each column has a header, A, B, and C. So we've got letters in the first row. And all the rest of the rows are numbers. If we scroll to the bottom, we can see we have 43 rows total that contain information. The first row, row number one, is the letters. So we have 43 rows, one of which is letters. So that means 42 rows of numbers, one row of letters. So now we know when we read in this file, we should be seeing something with 42 rows and three columns kind of like this quads over here. So we can go down here, we can try load. So let's load quadratic.txt. Oops, we got an error. It's actually a pretty cryptic, cryptic error. It says unknown text on line number one of ASCII file quadratic.txt. So remember our requirements for reading a text file. In order to read a text file with the load command, it has to be all numbers, basically. And this is not. We have letters and numbers. So we cannot read this file using load. Oh. Now, what you could do, I don't recommend this. And the reasons for that, I'll explain in a second. But what you could do is you can take this first line here with the letters on it and delete it and save the file. Here's why I don't recommend that. Um, it's fine 
to do that now in class, you know, as, as a student, just kind of playing around with these files, learning how to make things work. That's okay. When you get in the professional world, um, eventually at some point your work is going to show up on a lawyer's desk. It happens for lots of reasons, whether your company is getting sued over something or somebody else is getting sued and your company is involved with whoever's getting sued. You know, there's all kinds of uh, fingers and tentacles reaching out that are going to eventually touch your work. Your, your work is going to eventually at some point get seen by a lawyer. When that happens, and it's not necessarily because you're getting sued or you did anything wrong. It could just be that uh, some work is just getting reviewed by the legal department um, as part of a contract. So there's, you know, it's not necessarily insidious, but in any case, the lawyer is going to look at it. And if you have taken a data file and manipulated it in any way, now you now the lawyer is going to have questions about why you manipulated it. And then you end up having to, you know, talk to the lawyer on the phone or nobody wants to do that. So, um, we want to, uh, you know, avoid dealing with the lawyers as much as possible. So we kind of just keep everything clean. So manipulating a data file asks lawyers to ask you questions, basically, long story short. And chances are they're not going to ask you any questions, at least not in the first 10 years you're working. They're going to ask your boss questions. Then your boss is going to probably just get it all taken care of. But sometimes your boss may come knocking on your cubicle door and say, hey, don't manipulate your data files anymore because I just had a phone call that I didn't want to have to take. So kind of keep in mind that kind of stuff. It's, you know, when, once you get in the corporate world, there's, you're not just engineering anymore. Now you're thinking about um, consequences of trying to engineer. So a little bit of reality of what's, what's in the future as an engineer. It's unfortunate, but necessary. Anyway, so don't do what I just did here. Don't delete the A, B, and C. But for now, you can just to kind of test this out. So if I take off the A, B, and C, and I save my file as quadratic.txt, now I'm going to try the load quadratic.txt command again. And now it's going to work because now my file just contains numbers. And like I mentioned before, if you just do load quadratic.txt, it's going to lop off the file extension and it's going to name your new array quadratic. So it's going to take the file name without the extension. That's your new array here. Quadratic. It's another 42 by 3 array. So because we looked at our text file, we knew that was how much information we should be finding. So again, it's important to look at your text file before you start trying to read it, just to make sure, just see what's in it and get a fair idea of what you should expect when you read the file into your computer. So in this case, we expected 42 rows and three columns. And that's exactly what we got. Now, just to show the other form of the load command where we can change the name here. So let's say instead of calling it quadratic, I want to call it um, ABC. So I run ABC equals load quadratic.txt. When I use this set operator in here, I want to make sure to suppress the output. I don't want to print all these numbers on the screen. This becomes particularly important when you get really huge data files. If the data data file has something like 4,000 numbers in it, you definitely don't want to print those on your command window. You don't need to see 4,000 numbers. That's why we're reading into the MATLAB. So MATLAB can read it, not us. Okay, so we run this abc equals load quadratic.txt command. And we go on our workspace. Now we have ABC. It's a 42 by 3 array. So it did exactly the same thing that our load command did here, but we renamed the output of the command to ABC instead of the automatic quadratic there. Okay. So let's go back to our quadratic.txt file here, and we're gonna um, we're gonna fix it. We're gonna put it back the way it was. So. Um, we're going to put the ABC back in the top here and save it back to the way it was when we first downloaded it. So 
So now, with our file set up like this, with ABC in the top row, we cannot read this with load. But we can read it with import data command. So import data, it's going to take two steps. So our first step, we're going to label our box. We're going to call it A. Then we're going to run import data. Okay, so now if you look in your workspace, after you run the import data command, you have A in your workspace. But instead of being a 43 or 42 by 3 double array, it's what's called a one by one structure. Now, data structures is a little more advanced than anything we're going to get into in 2800. I'll briefly mention it in 3800 probably, but it's that's a more advanced programming concept that goes with object-oriented programming. And um, unless you're really getting into uh, writing programs and writing models, it's not something you need as uh, an engineer with a little bit of programming under your belt. That's something where you're a programmer with a little bit of engineering under your belt. That's kind of moving a little more beyond anything that we need to you know, get out of here with a degree. But import data uses the data structure in order to um, facilitate reading data. So we need to be aware of it, but we don't really need to understand how it works. It's uh, when you use import data, it's actually splitting things up into data, column headers, and text data. So the structure contains all those things. Now we need to reach into that data structure and pull out just the data. So that's our next command here. We're going to call the data. Uh, Let's see, we have quads, we have quadratic, we have ABC. Um, we're going to call this ID ABC, so import data ABC, just to kind of separate where each of these comes from. So I'm going to take that box that I labeled A, and then I'm going to reach into it and pull out the data. So A dot data. Again, we'll suppress the output because we don't want to see this on the screen. We just want to pull in our data here. So A dot data, we hit enter. Now we look in the workspace. We have ID, ABC, and that's our 42 by 3 array. So four different ways to get the same array. I guess one of them is from a separate file, but that quads.mat contains the same stuff. So remember, to use load, no letters in the file. Um, for legal reasons, once you get to the working world, don't play or don't mess up your data file. Don't take stuff out of it. Don't delete things. Use import data instead. Import data is the more powerful command for working with text files. So rules for file loading. Okay, so we have our file type and our command. If it's a mat file, the command is going to be load file name dot mat. Whatever the name of the file is, of course, that can change. That's your command. If it's a dot text file with only numbers, you're going to use load file name. Dot txt or whatever the file name is. It might not be txt, it might be csv or dat or something like that, but in general, whatever the file name is, that's what goes here. Or and lastly, dot text with headers with header info now you're going to use import data and x equals a dot data so you need to use both
for this particular case right here that I just drew this arrow next to, you could actually use import data here. Import data instead of load, and it'll do exactly the same thing. But you might as well use load in that case. It's fewer characters to type. At least from my perspective, the more typing I have to do, the more likely I am to make a typo and have it not work and have to go back and fix it later. So I tend to try to type the shortest commands possible. 